issues of range, charging times, and also some unintended consequences of those really cool features we showed in the other video and some of the other quirks as well. There are three battery sizes available or soon to be available for the Model S. There's a 40, a 60, and an 85 kilowatt hour battery. The larger it is, the more it costs. And the ranges start, let's start with this one, the largest battery, rated up to 300 miles of range per charge. So the middle one is rated at 230 miles of range, that's the up to number, and the smallest battery pack, 160. Most of the Model S charging can be done with this mobile charging cord that comes with the car. Now it's still a proprietary system. Uh, it doesn't use the same connector that most electric cars use, but it is at least smaller and easier. Now there are a number of different attachments for the other end. Here's the simplest. It is for a household 110, 120 volt outlet. Attach it like this, you plug it in, you get a green light on your box here, and then you go over to the car and plug it in. Once the core is energized, you bring the pistol over here, push the button, and pops open the charge door, which is completely hidden. The rest is pretty simple. Plug it on in, first it goes blue to say I'm talking to the charge box, and then it turns green and pulsates, that means you're charging. At the same time, the green indicator on the box at the other end shows flow. Well, this is known as level one charging. Uh, it delivers less than 1.5 kilowatts. The problem with it is it is practically pointless for a car like this. Uh, it adds roughly five miles of range for every hour of charging. The next level of charging is called level two. That's the type you'll find out in public and if you've owned an EV before you probably have level two charging at home. That has a different kind of connector but there's an adapter, so the regular pistol grip you find uh, is called J1772. You put that in one end and go directly into the charge port. You don't use that separate cord at all. What this does is it essentially quadruples the amount of current you're giving the car, uh, about 6.6 .6 kilowatts, and that gives you about 20 miles of range for every hour of charging. Where Tesla really earns its stripes is its ability to charge even faster, even at home. We go back to the cord as before, instead of using the 120 volt plug, there are a number of different 240 volt plugs you can attach. This one happens to be the type that is the most common at campgrounds and such. Now this will provide enough current to the car to deliver more than 9 kilowatts at a time and that gives you about 30, 31 miles of range for every hour of charging. Uh, that's faster than any other electric car on the market at this point, unless you go to the quick charging systems, which I don't think anyone's going to own at home. The good thing about this is that with this provided apparatus, all you need is the outlet, so you don't need to invest in a level two unit. Now this leads us to some of the shortcomings and unintended consequences. Remember, when this door was closed, we got near it with our little uh, cord and it popped open because it knew it was there. If you're charging using a level two unit, out in public or even at home, it won't recognize it. So you have to pop this thing. It's not on the key fob as it is, say, on our Chevy Volt. That's annoying. Also annoying, when you get in to pop it, you can't just reach in. You have to get in, sit in the seat because the seat sensor is what tells the car to turn on. Once the car turns on, you can reach to the center control panel to that touch screen and unlock it. Then there's the interesting door handles. They serve a purpose by keeping the car sleek and aerodynamic. And they're certainly cool, but they're not very consistent. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. There's a good number of not yet's in this car. Uh, for example, for the backup camera, it doesn't have the lines that show you uh, where your fenders are gonna be when you're backing, uh, but it's coming. Uh, also not here yet, any means of, you know, setting it up to pre-cool or preheat the cabin, which is pretty much a standard in EVs. And then frustrating it, that darn butt sensor, which turns the car off when you get out. You can't even get in the car, turn the heater on, and then get out. Because you get out, it turns the car off, stops heating the car. Butt sensor caused other problems for us. For one thing, it's kind of a dead man switch. Uh, if you open the door and get out, it assumes that you don't know the car is on, or maybe it's even in gear and you don't know it. 
Uh, as a result, sometimes I'll be backing up, lean to the side, the butt sensor thinks I'm gone, and the car will hit park really hard. Let's call it unintended deceleration. One of the reasons that happens is the car doesn't creep forward or back when it's in drive or reverse. It's called idle creep, though uh, that's a feature that's coming. And when I say it's coming, it's not just coming on future Model S vehicles. It's coming to this one. And this is one of the big advantages of this type of car. Issues of range, charging times, and also some unintended consequences of those really cool features we showed in the other video and some of the other quirks as well. There are three battery sizes available or soon to be available for the Model S. There's a 40, a 60, and an 85 kilowatt hour battery. The larger it is, the more it costs. And the ranges start, let's start with this one, the largest battery, rated up to 300 miles of range per charge. So the middle one is rated at 230 miles of range, that's the up to number, and the smallest battery pack, 160. Most of the Model S charging can be done with this mobile charging cord that comes with the car. Now it's still a proprietary system. Uh, it doesn't use the same connector that most electric cars use, but it is at least smaller and easier. Now there are a number of different attachments for the other end. Here's the simplest. It is for a household 110, 120 volt outlet. Attach it like this, you plug it in, you get a green light on your box here, and then you go over to the car and plug it in. 